My name is Tom Harris. I'm from Pasadena, California. We're going to demonstrate a MIS technique today for a second hammer toe using both the flex wires and then the fully threaded 2.5 screw. And this is a nice option from an MIS perspective. Joint prep, it's a very small single stitch incision uh, to get through that area. You have great fixation with the screw, uh, the flex wire as well. So you'd want to either localize the joint under fluoro. In this particular case, you can feel it. So we'll make a small stab incision. Once you've done that, you can obtain the 2.0 millimeter burr and um, we'll use the MIS technique to prepare the joint. Again, if you're not sure exactly where you are, you can always double check with fluoroscopy. Make some sweeping motions. Feel yourself in the joint. You have the other hand holding the toe to help stabilize it. We can check over fluoro what our preparation looks like. There you can see an adequate preparation of the PIP joint. When you do the MIS technique, you get some uh, bone reamings from the MIS uh, technique in and of itself. And so some of that you can save, you can put it back in prior to fusion if you'd like, but that's all good materials and good factors for healing. Uh, here we have the 0.86 Dynanite flex wire. And the flex wire is nice. You can see there's a partition here with a little laser line, and then the two-thirds of it is super elastic. So you can really bend it, and it returns back to its native shape and alignment. The other third, you could bend this and keep it bent. So if you're keeping it out of a toe for a K-wire fixation, you can still bend that and that'll stay bent. So we'll place the um, 0 0.86 flex wire starting off in the proximal phalanx and you want to be center center uh, in this portion of the case. And check for our alignment. The flex wire is in a good position in the proximal phalanx. Next, we will drill over this wire in preparation for the, the micro compression FT screw. You can kind of feel the end point there. You don't want to go through the base of the proximal phalanx. At this uh, point, we've prepared the proximal phalanx. Now we'll turn our attention to the middle and distal phalanx. At this point in the case, you can take a fluoroscopic image to see the length of the flex wire that you need. You would be cutting the wire if you wanted to shorten it a little bit, making sure that the end point is sticking outside of the toe, right where that laser line is. If you didn't want to cross the MTP joint, you'd have to cut it a little bit short at this point and then take a fluoroscopic images to see at what desired length and how long you want this. For the purposes of this demonstration, uh, we will not be cutting the wire. As you load this, you want the bendable portion out the toe so that this point can be bent uh, so that it doesn't subside into the toe at the conclusion of the case. And so we've loaded it and now we'll prepare the middle and distal phalanx. At this stage, we'd insert the wire as center, center as possible, out the middle and distal phalanx. To confirm the position of the flex wire, and we like it to be as center and center as possible in the middle and distal phalanx. Now we will drill through the middle and distal phalanx. We now retrograde the wire into the proximal phalanx. Since you've already drilled that proximal phalanx, you do have a sizable hole for this flex wire to find its way, but if you are having difficulty, you should definitely check on fluoro. And we've not drilled across the proximal phalanx, so there should be an endpoint to the K-wire as well. For this particular case, you can use a tonsil or a clamp and measure the appropriate length of the screw to go through both the middle and the proximal phalanx. If there is a distal interphalangeal joint deformity, such as a mallet toe, you can use this screw to cross both joints, the PIP and the DIP joint. In this particular case, we're just crossing the PIP joint. So now we're advancing the screw in the middle and proximal phalanx. Make sure we're out of the distal phalanx. And we get some tactile stimulation, tactile feedback there, and we'll see what the fluoroscopic image looks like. You can see the placement of the screw traversing the PIP joint. As you can tell from this rather small specimen, this 2.5 screw is a good option for those who have uh, smaller bones and uh, uh, smaller phalanxes. Now, this step is up to the surgeon's preference, but if you'd like for extra fixation to place the flex wire across the MTP joint, and that gives us the option for enhanced stability. There we see the flex wire crossing the MTP joint. The laser line is still outside the toe, so this portion of the flex wire can be bent at this junction. Typical for a K-wire fixation, we'll cut the wire, and then that can be uh, capped. Here we see bending of that wire at the MTP joint, and it'll bend 
and then return back to its native state. And this can be removed in clinic as you normally would with relative ease still able to be bent. Uh, here you can see the final fluoroscopic image. Uh, again, the screw does not go across the DIP joint, uh, but solely the PIP joint. Postoperatively, I'll keep this wire in anywhere from three to four weeks, uh, even all the way up till six weeks. The nice part about having the flex wire is that if a patient does walk on it early or gets into a shoe early or starts bending their toe early, you can rest assured that this flex wire is not likely to break and will come out straight, which is a really nice advantage over other wires, which will just fatigue like a paper clip and eventually break.